Hello everyone, you are welcome to Anchor Network where you get reliable and authentic news that are so crucial to you. I say big thank you to everyone who has been part of this channel and who has taken time to subscribe. And if you are here to subscribe, I say please click the red subscribe button and also the bell icon. The bell icon will allow you to get notified anytime we publish any news. President General of Ohaneze Ndigbo Worldwide, Chief Nea Nwodo, Thursday replied the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazi Namdekanu. He said that Kano's latest allegation against him necessitated his response. Uwondo, in an open letter to Kano, read out his contributions, performances, and quashed the claims that he colluded with the Nigerian army to attack Kano's residence in Umahia. The letter reads thus My attention has been drawn to a recorded speech made by Mazen Namde Kano, leader of IPOP, now streaming in the social media. The speech was ostensibly made in Germany ahead of a visit. Senator Ike Ikure Madu and I were scheduled to make to Germany for a meeting of Indigo in that video. Namdi peddled unprintable lies about me and rebuked Igbos in Germany for inviting me and threatened that I will not leave Germany alive. I would have ignored his speech as I have ignored many of his previous abuses and deliberate falsehood previously broadcast against me. I had ignored them in the past, not only because the distortions and falsehood were indirectly countered by the robust publicity of my activities and utterances, which negated its representations, but also because I thought it was indecent for a father and his son to be engaged in public disputations, especially when such disputations in our present circumstances will weaken our solidarity and portray us as divided and unserious lots. It has, however, become necessary now to rebut his persistent falsehood because not to do so will make them credible amongst those who may not have heard my side of the story. IPOP says federal government supports killing in Southeast over rejection of Ruga. The IPOP leader, first of all, accuses me of being an accomplice to the invasion of his homestead in Humahia by the Nigeria Army in Operation, in Operation Python Dance. Secondly, he accuses me persistently of being a Fulani stooge who would always do the beckoning of the ruling Fulani elites in Nigeria. He also accuses my late father of being a Fulani stooge. He owes me and our Southeast governors and legislators responsible for the marginalization of the Southeast. He accuses me of being against the realization of Biafra and a saboteur in the Igbo cause. First of all, I am neither the commander-in-chief of the Nigeria Armed Forces nor a member of the Nigeria Armed Forces. Secondly, I never participated in any meeting where Operation Python Dance was ever recommended or ordered. Truth is that when the second Operation Python Dance was ordered, I wrote against it and I advised against it in the media. I saw no need for it. I saw no need for it. I condemned the mayhem that followed it. I wrote to the GOC 82 Division, NA on the violation of the UN rules engagement by its troops. I listened to the brief of the Abia state government on the clashes between the Nigerian police and Nnamdi Kanu on the establishment of the Biafra Security Service without legislative approval or knowledge of the Nigerian police. I called for caution. I confronted the Attorney General of the Federation on his move to obtain an interlocutory order to enable him to classify IPOP as a terrorist organization. When the federal government finally proscribed IPOP, I criticized it. I wrote to the UN Secretary General in these words. It is a verifiable fact that other than recourse to the use of interpret, interpret language, the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, and movement for the actualization of sovereign state of Biafra, MASOP, Campaign has been made generally peaceful, non-violence and in conformity with the relevant provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Their campaign has also been in conformity with the United Nations Instruments and Protocol on Human, Civil and Political Rights. It is for this reason that I, the undersigned, without endorsing some of, the, of their method of agitation, still make bold to observe that their protestations have remained at the level of verbal expressing radio communications, peaceful street demonstrations, 
prayer sessions and lately a sit at home event in memory of the millions of Igbo lives lost during the civil war. At no time has any of these groups resorted to the use of arms or violence. In their sit at home event on 30th May 2017 was an inconvenience. It was more so to the Igbo communities of the southeast and not to the people of the northern states or the rest of Nigeria. So therefore turn around to so use it as a reason for mass ejection of the Igbo in north, in northern Nigeria. It's a mere ploy to isolate the Igbo for another round of massacre, dispossession and deprivation of their fundamental human and constitutional rights. This, Your Excellency, portends the danger of degenerating into another civil war in Africa, in Africa's most populous country, a breach of international peace and security, a messy breakup of Nigeria resulting in massive internal displacements of persons and high incidence of refugee flows. I took the IPOP case to the British Institute of International Affairs in Catam House, London, and said the following ways. Let me see this opportunity to once more thank the Royal Institute of International Affairs for inviting me as President General of Hwanese Indigbo to speak here today. In Nigeria, Indigbo, whose social cultural organization I lead, are notwithstanding their historical experiences in Nigeria, the most loyal ethnic group to the concept of one Nigeria. We are the largest ethnic group other than the indigenous group in any part of Nigeria. We invest and contribute to the economic and social life of the communities wherever we live. We are proudly Christians but very accommodating uh, of our brothers of other religious persuasions. We are grossly marginalized and still treated by the federal government as second class citizens. No Igbo man, for instance, has any security arm of the Nigeria Armed Forces. Our area is the most heavily policed as if there was a deliberate policy to intimidate us and hold us down. Our endurance has been stretched beyond hooks gauge for elastic limits. The deployment of the Nigeria Army under the guise of Operation Python Dance to the Southeast was unconstitutional under Section 2. 7-1 of the 1999 Constitution. Deployment of the army in the Constitution is only allowed in circumstances of insurrection, terrorism, and external aggression, not in killing of priests or fighting kidnapping. And in those circumstances where they can be deployed, leave of the Senate must be sought. This brazen impunity in dealing with matters which concern the South is, is provocative. The RIY Youth Council, by issuing a, cute, a quit notice for Igbos to leave northern Nigeria and declaring a federal republic of Nigeria without Igbo land, had committed serious infractions of the law. First, by declaring a new republic of Nigeria, which exercised the southeast unitarily, unitarily, they were committing treason. By issuing a proclamation for Nigerians to leave any part of Nigeria, forcibly, they were infringing the fundamental rights of innocent Nigerians as guaranteed by the Constitution to live and do business anyway. By commencing an inventory of Igbo property in Nigeria for seizure by October 1st, 2017, they were attempting conversation. By proclaiming a mob-up action of those who did not comply with their order by October 1st, they were without that inciting genocide. Yet, in spite of all these orders, to arrest them by the Kaduna State Government and other Inspector General of Police were not enforced, nor were they prevented from holding courts with governors and leading elders from the north. I rebuke the federal government for the way IPOP, an armless group fighting for self determination, was classified as a terrorist organization, Why Fulani Esme, classified by the Global Terrorist Index as the fourth deadliest terrorist organization in the world was treated with kid gloves. I maintain the same view in my public lectures at Nnamdi Azikwe University, Oka, UNN, Odumegu Ojuku University, Anambra State, and many other places within and outside Nigeria. I challenge Nnamdi to give me one single evidence of my involvement in conspiring Operation Python Dance. Notwithstanding this abundant evidence of my 
championing iPod cause he ordered an invasion of my telephone with numerous insulting calls and threats to my life. My home in Ukehe was bombed. Police investigations of this incident linked some some of the some of them to iPod members. Their lawyers approached me and I thought that a father taking his son to court and subsequently to jail will be on Igbo. Notwithstanding their confession statements, I withdrew my complaint against them and they pledged to be of good behavior. Therefore, the chair, the campaign of calumny resumed. Professor Ben Uwabweze, a foremost Igbo leader, summoned two meetings of myself, accompanied by some members of Oane's executive and IPOP leaders, to his homes in Egnugun and Atane. After these meetings, he declared that IPOP has not established any prima facie case against me and that he did not want any of their spurious allegations raised again. We shook hands and embraced each other. Namdi accuses me of being a full and stooge. I am sure no, res no reasonable Igbo man believes him. I have criticized President Muhammad Buhari more than any other Nigerian. Perhaps what I don't do is to insult his person or call Nigeria a zoo. I was trained to be respectful. I can disagree with you without being rude and impertinent. No matter how sectional, incompetent, or unproductive I consider the president of Nigeria to be, I must respect his age and office in my criticism of him. As for the attack on my late father, I forgive Namdi. My, father's, my father was Zeke's minister and Okpara's minister. My father and late chief Emen Ugochuku were some of the prominent financiers of the Biafran war. I fought the Biafran war myself as a Biafran soldier at a very young age without my parents objecting. Yes, I said President Shewu Shagari and General Absalam Abubakar as a minister. I respect them notwithstanding differences of opinion we may have on the structure of Nigeria. Odumegu Ojuku was like my senior brother. Bianca can attest to our closeness and my loyalty to him. Vice President Alex Ekwemi was my mentor and friend. Namdi Azikwe confided in me and treated me like a son. M.I. Okpara was the chairman of my wedding. Late Dr. Dozier Ikedife was the first person to sign my nomination form for the office of President General of Oranese. None of these Igbo leaders found me a traitor of Igbo cause. Everywhere I have been in Igbo land, young men and women embrace me, pose for photographs with me, and commend my efforts in championing our cause and our case. I salute them all. The IPOP leader accuses me of joining the Southeast governors to sabotage the cause of our people. This young man either does not understand nor appreciate the system we run. Our governors were elected in accordance with the law. They are chief security officers of states even though the armed forces that should assist them take orders from Abuja. I do not belong to any organ in their governments. They do not give me instructions, neither do I give them. We are supposed to cooperate and work together in the interest of our people. Where we differ, I must respect our freedom to do so, but in some cases, I must also respect the confidentiality of our discussion. Finally, no amount of insultive, provocative, and incendiary speeches can get us Biafra or restructuring. I was one of the agents that put together the Southern and Middle Belt Leadership Forum. No pressure group in Nigeria is as strong as this group in the struggle to restructure Nigeria. Restructuring Nigeria will give the Southeast Gov sovereign independence in the control of our national resources and political control of our government structures. Short of a war, you can't force Nigeria to grant us Biafra. I believe that working together we can achieve a referendum and constitutional amendments or a plebiscite. That will be a first step to self-determination. The journey of a Catalonia and Shaarawi Arab Democratic Republic are examples of how long and tedious the struggle for self-determination is seen, is seen in our contemporary world. Let's go step by step and without acrimony. I have noted the threat to my life from the IPOB leader. I leave that to God and, and the law. Ndigbo will record that 
When the leader of IPOP was released, the Southeast Senate caucus advised him to leverage with me and other Igbo leaders so that we can achieve a synergy. We met once and, the, and three weeks after that, in spite of our cordial discussions, I was the subject of his abuse on Radio Biafra. I would appear, it would appear that he is on a megalomaniac stick where he arrogates to himself the monopoly of wisdom and capacity to cause mayhem. In Digbo, I have championed your cause with every amount of energy in me. I have worked with little encouragement or assistance. Thank God my team and I have elevated Oranese Indigbo to an enviable status. It is dangerous to our solidarity and ultimate success if we allow this vituperative outburst to truncate our solidarity. In spite of all, I say I salute Namdi for his courage and his persistence in upholding our case, but I urge you all to rise up and condemn what is condemnable. Speak up and shame those who would want us to split into pieces and destroy our resolve to fight us as united people. As a father, I always forgive an erring child, but not without drawing his attention to a misdemeanor, which should never be repeated. Uh, by John Naya Umodo, President, President General Oganese Ndigbo Worldwide. Wow, guys, this is a long one. I was like, wow, when is this a letter? When is it going to end? Wow, it's not really an easy thing. Oh, uh, guys, are you uh, listening to all of this? It's self-explanatory. I would like you guys, you know, to comment and you know, let, leave your comments below what you think about this letter, what you think, you know, the, the, the underlying thing uh, under this, uh, you know, the letter that uh, uh, this, uh, the President General of an uh, organization the worldwide has written to Namdi Kano. Please leave your comments and let's hear your own take. Thank you very much. Bye. <laughs>